Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor. Welcome to our show. It's for you, those of you who work so hard for your money and you're ready for your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom and cash flow today, not 30 or 40 million years from now, where you get to roam with the dinosaurs once again, maybe, possibly. Uh, but you want prosperity today so you can live that life that you love with those that you love. But most importantly, guys, it's not just about getting rich, it's about living a rich life. Because as you're blessed financially, you have a greater capacity to bless the lives of others. Thank you for allowing me to do that with you guys today. Appreciate you guys tuning in. You've been binging. You've been sharing this podcast. And guys, you've already put this in the top 1% of podcasts worldwide. Thank you so much because you guys are seriously the best, the best audience that we ever had. Hey, as a reminder, remember to check out our website, moneyripples.com. On there, there's a passive income calculator you can take today to find out how much cash flow you can create, how much passive income you can create in the next 12 months. Be sure to check that out as well as if you haven't done so, check out our other YouTube channel, the Money Ripple Shorts page. We've got lots of short content for you right there. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. Okay, guys, so I'm bringing on somebody that's extra special to me, not just because we've been friends for, I don't know, boy, seven, eight years, I think it's been now, uh, but Jared and Amber Smithson, uh, just, you guys are gonna find out just amazing, amazing people. Uh, they've been clients of ours for many years, uh, but most importantly, these guys are just an amazing example of success, uh, both in business, in their family, in their personal life, and in their financial life too. And so I'm really excited to have them on to share their journey, share a little bit of the things that they've learned, uh, both in their business as health coaches, um, as well as what they've done financially for themselves too. Um, give you a little bit more background on them. They have their own health and wellness coaching company that they've, they've done. Uh, they've been in this now for several years. Uh, they've actually helped thousands of other health coaches be able to prosper and grow their businesses and just do amazing things in this space. They also help really talk about the things that we like to talk about, which is prosperity, uh, specifically in three key areas, which is like mind, body, and finances, right? Uh, they also have three great kids. One actually going to Kansas here pretty soon and just found out. And and they also love playing pickleball. In their spare time, just like a mile, you know, half a mile down the street from me. So, hey guys, welcome to our show. Thanks for having us, Chris. <laughs> and I should have mentioned you guys are like, like total, like D1, like, almost like professional volleyball players too, and have been for many years, huh? We'd like to think that. And then we play against actual D1 players and and we take it in the face. So. Well, I don't know about that because Jared <laughs> and our son Trent just took second in a double A tournament, which that's the top. That's the top. So he did wow. he some game point and, and took an actual ball to his face and was bleeding. So... <laughs> <laughs> So when you were taking it, you take it to the face. You were being very literal about that, weren't oh, you? Oh, totally, completely. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Congratulations. That's incredible. You know, I've, I remember I played volleyball in high school, like, you know, in PE class a few times, and that was pretty cool. You know, I can rock a badminton racket. Maybe that's yeah. about it. <laughs> a lot slower pace when it starts going up and floating down, right? Yeah. Well, tell us, like, how did you guys get on this journey, especially as entrepreneurs in the first place? Let's hear about that and how you guys became health coaches. Well, I mean, it started with, we were actually struggling financially, Chris, and mm -hmm. it was about 14 years ago that uh, we hadn't made a house payment in over six months. We were just waiting for the bank to come knock on our door and say, get on out. And yeah. we were struggling. We were stressed out of our minds. We had our identity stolen to the tune of over a hundred thousand um, dollars. And we just, we didn't really know what to do, honestly. And yeah. my mom introduced us to the health and wellness program that we coach now. She said, you guys need to do this. And we jumped in, we jumped in with two feet. And I mean, fast forward almost 14 years and it's a complete 180 in our body, mind, finances. It, mm -hmm. it was, it's just been fun. Yeah, it kind of goes back further than that, though, because like you mentioned, we have three kids after our second son that's about to head up Kansas for the next couple of years. After he was born, Amber was just holding on to that baby weight. Right. 
and she she didn't feel like herself. She was she was dealing with some postpartum depression. Um, it was bad. Like yeah. like we're looking at all the real things that happen in life, and we're like, man, how do we get through this? So she actually started focusing on that one aspect of we call it the trilogy of optimal health, uh, mm-hmm. body, mind, finances. She started to focus on her body, and she really changed her nutrition, and she was. Uh, really creating these habits, uh, consistent habits around moving her body and exercise. And uh, she she lost about 35 pounds. She was feeling fantastic. And she's like, Jared, you should do this with me and stuff. And I like try her little stuff for a couple of days. I'll be like, man, this is too hard. Like I'm, I spent like 90% of my working hours in my car, just traveling for work. And I couldn't do all the food prep that she was doing at home. And she was running... Uh, a web development business. But 14 years ago, you know this, <laughs> we were in the middle of a recession, right? Yep. And actually now we're the, at least the government and, and society and the news. This, the news and stuff is talking about a recession right now. And this is actually, I don't know if people are aware of this. This is the longest period of time in the last hundred years between recessive periods. Yeah. The average is like five to seven years where we get mm-hmm. a drop and a recessive period. And right now it's been so good for so long that people are like, whoa, it's like we're, we've been feasting for so long. And now people are scared because it, because we have that short-term memory loss. Right. And yeah. this is the perfect time. In fact, for people, they start going, maybe I need to talk to someone like Chris. Maybe I need to have these principles. Maybe I need to make extra money or do better things with my money, right? So we were really happy that we found you those many years ago, Chris. <laughs> I know. Well, it's it's incredible because, I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys had a huge turnaround story. I mean, it wasn't just financial. It was physical. It was emotional and mental. I mean, you guys did the full transformation. I mean... Do you get do you get people sometimes coming to you thinking like, oh, if I just do this, if I just exercise more, my life's going to be perfect. Do you get people like that still to this day? Oh, I was one of them. Uh huh. I, I was a collegiate athlete. I knew exercise. I knew getting in the gym. Um, but at the same time, they were trying to put weight on me. Right. So right. I knew how to eat like an athlete. But then when I stepped away from the competitive athletics, I was still eating like an athlete. But I wasn't as active all day long. So I gained 50 pounds. I, yeah. I blame it on her because I'm like, I got pregnant three times with my wife. <laughs> I just never had any babies, right? So I just kept well, that pregnancy them. weight you gained, right? <laughs> exactly. Sympathy. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people, they they just think I just need to exercise my weight off. And mm-hmm. exercise is a component of it. We're definitely going to tell you to move your body, but it's the mindset part of it. In really seeing that long-term change. Right. Whether it's so with true. your body or your mind or your finances. You can't uh you can't go to the gym once a week or once a month and expect transformation. Right? You're what's yeah. gonna happen if you go to the gym once a week, you're always gonna be sore. I That's don't right. actually believe in being sore. Like yeah. I at 48, Amber just mentioned that my son, my 19-year-old son and I, we took second in this in this big tournament. Um, and people are like, whoa, I, I just hope that I'm able to move when I'm 48. And I'm still competing, but it's because I don't believe in being sore. I believe in moving my body every single day and doing things in incremental challenges, raising challenges incrementally so that I get better and better and better because I'm committed to what am I doing for the next 90 days in my life? Like pay your quarterly taxes, right? Um, I'm What's the next 90 days so that I can be ready for the next 90 days and the next 90 days. And same thing with finances. It's like, you don't, you don't make financial changes one day in the gym, in the financial gym. You have right. to do it. You have to make these commitments to your daily lifestyle to create any transformation in your life. So true. That's so true. You know, it's it's funny because you, you you bring up a good point about, you know, the pieces that people are missing, right? They think it's just easy to do this or do that, or maybe you're just blessed with beautiful genes. You know, you guys were athletes before, so you can become athletes again. It's so easy. But 
uh, something I've never shared with you guys before is, uh, I don't know if you recall the first time we went out to dinner, we did like a double date, almost like a five, we almost had a fifth wheel too. Right. And so we're out for pizza and everything. And, and at that time, people may not know this, but on the podcast, you know, that have been watching this, but before I was over 30 pounds heavier, I was actually quite inflamed. My body was inflamed, not because it wasn't exercising. I was still exercising, running, doing all the things I do today, but, um, my diet, my nutrition was out of whack. And I remember like, uh, my bladder was filling up. I didn't want to, I didn't want to like be rude and leave. So of course my bladder's full. You can't suck it in very well. And I remember my, my wife at that time, she made the comment. She's like, Chris, suck in your stomach. You look fat. And uh, she said that right to me. Like, right. As we're about to say our goodbyes. I'm like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Once I do, like, I'll be able to suck it in again, you know? And so maybe that's a little TMI for people, but it's true. Like I, I learned, I didn't know at the time as well as I do now, which is that nutrition is everything. That's the foundation. You know, the, I, as you share that, like I kind of get emotional about it because um, I was in the same place. Like I was, when I graduated from high school, I'm six foot two. When I graduated from high school, I weighed 158 pounds. Dripping wet. Dripping wet <laughs> and a size 13 shoe. Uh-huh. Right. And And I was playing basketball for eight hours a day. Wow. I was practicing, but then I loved the sport dearly. And so after practice, I would go play pickup ball with my friends. And then late at night, I would break into our church and and I would shoot uh, 500 more free throws that night because I just loved the game. Mm -hmm. Right. But I was also size 13 shoe. Fast forward to 35 years old when I had gained 50 pounds and I lose that 50 pounds. I was eating like junk when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, but Mm -hmm. I was young. I had good genetics. I was, I was exercising for eight hours a day and stuff. I was eating thousands and thousands and thousands of calories and tons and tons of sugar. 35 years old, I lose 50 pounds. I am a size 12 shoe. I lost a full size in shoe size because of inflammation in my body that I'd had since I was a teenager. And I would add, you stopped snoring. I stopped snoring. So I was really (laughs) happy about that. (laughs) But that's true. I forgot. I used to snore too. I forgot about that. I wasn't only fat. I didn't become fat physically. And just because I, I was eating too much or eating too much of the wrong stuff, my fat physical condition was because of fat emotional condition. I had right. I had been living and suppressing a lot of emotion and stuff like this. And anytime that we have those uh, skeletons in the closet or whatever, we want to call them the monster under the bed or or the suppressed child in the basement or in down in the cellar and stuff. When we start to be able to come face to face and invite those skeletons to our table and have conversations and learn the wisdom that those emotions have we get to move beyond it because down in the down uh, in the closet or in the basement and stuff those things are running our lives and when we invite them to the table and learn from them now we get to gain the wisdom from them but they're no longer running the show i used to eat because i was lonely and scared and tired and depressed and stressed or whatever and now I never, it's my goal to never emotionally eat. I might eat a dessert or something like that, but it's out of choice, not because I'm feeling something and I'm trying to get rid of that feeling. You're burying the feelings, right? Eating the feelings up. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Now, I know people are going to be asking this course because there's a variety of people listening. If somebody wanted to learn, one, to know the information you guys know, or two, even to teach people how to do it, because I know with your guys' system, I've actually seen health coaches make a lot of money um, where the average person doesn't, right? I mean, you guys have a whole system in place. So I know there's two different types of people. Some people are like, I need to lose that weight. And then there's other people saying, I also want to help others do the same. What's the best way for them to reach out to you guys to do that? Well, the best way to reach us is through our website. If you go to healthcanbesimple.com, it's going to have an online health evaluation. Just fill that out. And you know what, Jared or myself, we're going to actually call you. Uh, We don't need to take on personal clients, Chris, but our mission is to help people to move forward in their body, mind and finances. And so we can't we can't stop doing this. 
-hmm. We still take on personal people, both clients and teaching people how to have a home-based business because it has changed our lives, literally. And And we've seen it change thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of other lives. Yep. We're not talking about magical juices or berries at the bottom of the volcano. This is an actual program that you're going to move forward. You're going to get better. Yeah, that's true. I I believe it. And that's where we align a lot, right? Because you guys are doing this. You don't like financially, you don't have to keep doing this. You could just stop, just let your business do its thing. And you guys are perfectly fine. But yet you keep going because that mission, that calling is pulling you guys along, isn't it? Absolutely. We've been retired from our full-time jobs for over a decade. And we still have that drive. We still we still want to do this, Chris. It's not just because we want active income. We have residual income and then also passive income through what you've taught us. It It just really drives us. Yeah, to add to that, it's like, One of the reasons that we started working with you is because we're coaches ourselves. We life coach, we health coach, uh, we emotionally coach people to become, uh, to reach their potential. And the cool thing about potential is once you reach what you think your potential is, you see the next peak. (laughs) You see even Mm -hmm. more potential in yourself. But if you want to get better in anything in life, find yourself a coach. Yeah. Chris and I, you and I, were in the same business mm-hmm. in the financial industry before we did what we do now. But yeah. you said there's a better way than traditional financial planning or advising. He's the anti-financial, the anti-financial planner, planner, right? <laughs> and yep. so we went to you and we're like, Chris has has relationships. He knows how to put people in the same rooms with each other. And so you've introduced us to people like our CPAs and and different investments and and you've been our coach. You're not just telling us what to do. You're asking us, what do you want to accomplish? And then you're helping facilitate this plan for us. We do the same thing with people's health, with their finances, create if they want to help other people. I the best way to help some, help yourself do something is to teach it to somebody else. This is yeah. why many of our clients become coaches because people start to see them and see their passion for living. You know, the old adage that like most people uh, die when they're 75 or they die when they're 25, but they just get, they get buried when they're 75, mm-hmm. right? Or choose whatever age you want to now. But mm-hmm. I want people to be fully alive every single day. So we wanted our money to make money yeah. so that we, so our daily work is purpose driven rather than money driven. We get to live in our genius every single day because we don't have to work every single day just for income. Money can go make money. That's why we went to Chris because he's the best at creating passive income. Well, that's one thing I want to dig into a little bit with you guys and your mentality behind that, because obviously you guys have a very comfortable life, right? I mean, like you said, you you can stop. You don't have to take on a new client at all, just like myself personally, right? Like we don't have to take on new clients at all, but you, but, and you, and you can even say this, like a lot of people, I'm going to call people out, specific group of people, especially those in network marketing, direct sales, right? A lot of times they'll tell me like, oh, I'm taken care of because I've got enough residual income to pay forever. And I think that's cute and all, you know, and it's true. Like they do have that coming in. So from your perspective, why would someone like that want to keep creating passive income where they get money working for them versus just keep taking in residual income? Why would you have passive income as well? For me, comfort is the killer of dreams, right? It's like um, people's unwillingness to get uncomfortable in their life. I, I, I love Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Right. And I heard him one time say that uh, when he was getting ready to be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, um, he said, I realized late in my career that the championships, the MVPs, the scoring titles, all these things. He's like, it actually wasn't the dream. The dream was the 4 a.m. workouts that I was putting in 
to create all those things. And yeah. for us, when you help someone else create something, it's like having kids. Like my kids have accomplished some of the same things that I accomplished at their ages, maybe mm-hmm. in different sports or academics or music or something like that. But when they accomplish it, it brings me so much more joy than when I accomplished it myself. When you achieve something, you kind of cross that metaphorical finish line and you're like, where's the ticker tape parade, right? Uh Like it's so short lived. It's a moment in time. And it's like, what am I going to create next? Who am I going to help next that can then like I find so much joy in teaching someone how to fish rather than just giving them a fish. Mm. Well, and I'll answer your question, Chris. I think it's fun. (laughs) It is so fun to invest your money because I am an investor. I invest Mm -hmm. in different things that you bring us. I invest in relationships with people. I invest in my physical health, my mental health, my personal and professional development. I just see myself as an investor and I just think it's too dang fun to not do it, Chris. Yeah, we, we used to be consumers of relationships, of health, of finances. And we just flipped our lifestyle over and said, we're going to be investors in these things rather than consumers. The coolest thing in the world is an investment account grows. A consumption account, if you're just like, oh, this is my checking account and this is where I draw money out to pay my bills and do fun things and stuff like that. You're just always playing this game like, oh my gosh, do I have enough investment in a, in anything, any of those accounts, relationships, finances, health, whatever it is, when you have this investment mentality, it just continues to grow. I love that. Yeah, I call it like that creator mindset versus the consumer mindset, right? Like you're trying to create something more versus just consume it. And like you said, like almost just run down your assets. And that could be running down your relationships. That could be running down your health over the years, right? It's not creating more health. It's running down your health. It's running down those relationships rather than creating better, higher quality, just amazing relationships. So any any final thoughts you guys have about really anything we talked about? This has been such a great conversation. I don't want it to end. I mean, a, a final thought I would have is we we love connections. And maybe one of your listeners, maybe it's not for them. They don't, they don't want to connect with us and have them coach them with their, Mm -hmm. with their healthy body or healthy mind, but you might know somebody, you might know someone who really could benefit that. And we just love making connections with people. And we might know someone who could help them in their business. Cause that's what, that's what it's about. It's that abundance mindset that I don't know. I just, I can't stop connecting with people because like I said, too dang fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I've, I've had so many, I've had several clients like you guys have been to our, our events and our masterminds and things like that over the years. And there's people who are like, Oh, thank you so much for introducing us to Amber and Jared. It's been so, so nice to be able to get to know them. And sometimes they've even taken different career paths as a result of just meeting you guys. So it's true. I agree. It's you guys are definitely a, a very wealthy type of relationship to have in, in life. Well, thanks for having us, Chris. We we feel the same towards you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Well, again, like like uh, we always do, everybody, if you guys want to connect with Amber and Jared, we'll put that link, healthcanbesimple.com, in the show notes, in the blog. If you go on moneyripples.com, the blogs, you got all of that there. You can connect with them. But again, guys, like if this is something that really spoke to you, whatever it is, whatever that little whisper is telling you to do, take action on that immediately. Don't wait. Don't go listen to another podcast. I mean, if you have to, write it down, send an email, do whatever you got to do. Visit healthcanbesimple.com or whatever you need to do to go and take action so that your life changes today. Because it's not about what you know, it's about what you do. And then that wisdom grows with it. So guys, make it a wonderful and prosperous week. And we'll see you later. 